Hi folks, this is all the fruit. I'm in Heidelberg in Germany. It's October and so it's time for the orange harvest. Uh, wait, there must be something wrong. Germany and oranges. Kind of, those two things don't go together. So either I must be confused or I must be lying or I must not be in Germany. Well, if you look at the opposite side of the river, there is the famous Heidelberg Castle with the old town half hidden behind those trees. I'm not that good in Photoshop, so I basically cannot fool you with this one. So, why do we have oranges in Germany? And this doesn't look like a greenhouse, but oranges and other kind of Mediterranean plants are growing freely here. Well, the other plants around here might be Mediterranean, but this type of orange, firstly, it's not really an orange, secondly, it's not really Mediterranean, and thirdly, it doesn't really need very, very warm climate. So this is the three-leaf bitter orange, or three-leaf Chinese orange, or three-leaf Japanese orange. You can see why it's called three-leaf. It has three leaflets on each leaf. Well, why it's called orange? Well, the fruit kind of look like small pale oranges. They are yellow and not orange in color. As you can see here, the tree is deciduous, and the first branch is already turning kind of, well, the leaves are turning kind of yellow, so it's going to lose its leaves in a couple weeks. And also, okay, look at that, all the lower branches have been harvested by other people. Fortunately, I'm a bit taller than the average person, so I can get a couple more fruit. If you look very closely, you'll see that the fruit are pubescent. So, very frost hardy three leaflets, pubescent fruit, deciduous, that all doesn't really sound like a citrus fruit. And so it is disputed whether the three-leaf bitter orange is a member of the genus Citrus or has its own genus, Poncirus. It was thought that Poncirus trifoliata is, or Citrus trifoliata is a very isolated species, but recently another species has been found in Yunnan, China. Poncirus trifoliata also comes from China and Korea. It has been cultivated on quite a considerable scale for a lot of different reasons. And believe me, the taste of the fruit is not one of the main reasons. Well, first, of course, it's cultivated as an ornamental because it's a striking and beautiful plant and it's much more frost hardy than other citrus species due to its deciduous nature. When it drops the leaves in winter, it photosynthesizes with this green bark. So yeah, ornamental, check. Really frost hardy? Check. If you look at those spines, it has also been used very successfully as a hedge, basically as living barbed wire. It works against cattle, horses, sheep, deer. At, uh, I think, Oklahoma State University it was. They, uh, the university planted a lot of hedges, and decades later they say, yep, yeah, those hedges are 100% student-proof. So, basically, those thorns are even good enough against students. One more use. Well, in Chinese traditional medicine, this is also a very important fruit. It's being used to, to treat allergic inflammations. I don't know what inflammations exactly, but seems that, yeah, stuff like rheumatism, arthritis, and a lot of other allergic inflammations can be treated with this fruit. Also, it hybridizes freely with uh, members of the genus Citrus. That's one reason for including it in this genus. And the hybrids are, of course, frost hardier, more frost hardy than the other citrus species. Also, you can graft citrus species on top of 
Ponsiros. It's a little bit of a problem because Ponsiros is deciduous and citrus is not, but it still works. And also the rootstock is very hardy and frost resistant. Also it's resistant to some diseases which are very rampant in the genus citrus due to its isolated nature. I guess it's doesn't get all the diseases of citrus, so it's very useful for a lot of different reasons. But the fruit are also quite useful. The fruit themselves. If you look at them, those fruit are the ones I got from this tree or shrub. Those bigger and bumpier ones I got from another one. I don't even know if this is a different cultivar or just some different genotype or if they are maybe sick or whatever. They don't look sick. They look like a kaffir lime more or less. Why those look more or less like a kasturi lime. Well, if you look closely, you will see that the fruit are downy. They have very short hairs. This is in contrast to the real citrus, which have smooth skin. And just like citrus, the skin contains a lot of wax, but here it contains a lot more wax than in citrus. This is the knife I used to cut this one fruit. So even after I lick it, the knife is still covered in wax. And you will need a sponge and soap and a lot of force to remove this from the knife. And even if you remove it from the knife, it will stick to your sponge. It's basically almost like candle wax. And the rind contains a lot more than the rind of a normal citrus. Well, when you look at the inside of the fruit, those ornamental cultivars, they consist, about 40 or 50 percent of the inside consists of seeds, which of course is not so good if you want to get at the juicy pulp. Now let's try the juicy pulp. All the sources claim it's bitter. Hmm. The funny thing is, I've never encountered a bitter ponsiros fruit. To me they are sour, also they are incredibly aromatic, also I can feel some wax coating my teeth now. But actually the taste of the inside, the taste of the pulp, if you get past the wax in the rind, is just sour, not bitter. I mean, the right is slightly bitter, but the right of lemons and oranges is also usually bitter. So I don't know why it's called the bitter orange, because to, for me the pulp is just sour like a lemon, and there is lots of flavor, most of it coming from the right. So I fed this fruit to a lot of people, maybe 10 or 20 percent like to eat it out of hand. For most, it's just too aromatic or too sour or the wax is too sticky. Well, for all the others, there are lots of other uses, lots of recipes with ponsiros. I mean, there are big areas in northern China where you cannot cultivate other citrus fruits. So the farmers came up with a lot of recipes. Well, what I usually do is I use it for lemonade. You basically cut them up. Well, you basically cut them remove the juice and then you have a very sour juice. Usually it's good to stain them through a sieve because you'll end up with a lot of fruit and other uh, seeds and other pieces. But after that the lemonade tastes really good. And also if you harvest it from a, a local park or even from your private garden, of course the right will not be treated with a lot of pesticides. So you don't have to be afraid to get poisoned. Well, you can also use it for liquors. I used it successfully for liquors. You can use it for jams and marmalade, including the rind, which is, of course, organic since it's not been poisoned like the commercially traded citrus. Well, what else? Yeah, I usually use it for lemonade and liquor, but, but as I said, marmalades, jams. After you get past the tons and tons of seeds and past the sticky wax in the right, you can basically use it like any other citrus species. It's hardy to USDA sown 6. I've seen it from the Mediterranean, basically from USDA sown 11, 
to USDA Zone 7 in Germany. I've never seen it in USDA Zone 6. But, oh, look, the Chinese are really fond of this. Well, not only the Chinese. I had to wait for like 10 minutes for some German grannies to fill their bags with those fruit. So, yeah, they're getting kind of popular. Yeah, I can only advise you to plant or forage this fruit wherever you are in colder areas where you cannot grow other citrus species. It is not as good as uh, selected cultivars of the genus citrus, but it's better than nothing. It's definitely better than nothing. And apart from the edible use, there are lots of other uses. And as you can see here in USDA zone 8, it's fruiting a lot. The lower branches have been stripped of the fruit, but they were just as loaded as the upper ones. So folks, this was the bitter orange. I cannot advocate this plant enough to you. Stay tuned for a lot more fruit videos from the parks and gardens of Germany. And don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe.